As a woman, fashion is an important part of who I am and my self-expression. But finding clothes that feel good and look good on me can be challenging, especially in a body that doesn't fit the industry fashion trends. Today on this episode, we're going to talk about how to embrace our perfect imperfections. But before we jump in, I want to remind you to please subscribe and share. And if you'd like to join our community, I encourage you to go to our private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. If you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, you can support us financially at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. On this episode, we're going to be interviewing Lainey, the founder of Trendable. Trendable is a company that aims to provide fashion, inspiration, and support to women with invisible physical challenges and disabilities. And I want to thank you, Lainey, for joining us on Chair Chats today. Uh, and you know, what you're doing with Trendable is so amazing because fashion is huge for me as a girl and I always want to look good and feel good. And it's like this balance, delicate balance between the external and the internal, right? Like the, for sure. the external, um, affects our internal feelings and how we feel on the inside also affects our external. So Um, I love how fashion is a platform for us to explore that part of ourselves as human beings. Um, And so I just want to give our audience some time to get to know you a little bit. So if you can just start by briefly sharing who you are and why you started Trendable and what your mission is. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm Lainey, and like you mentioned, I have a website called Trendable that I started about, oh, it's been almost uh, two and a half years, and it is all about looking and feeling your best with a disability, uh, because I do believe, and um, you know, science proves that when you do take the time to care about your parents, it affects your insides, it affects how you feel about yourself, your confidence, and also affects how others respond to you. And a lot of people with disabilities in general, um, one of the first things they say, well, you know what, I don't need to do that. I don't need to put on earrings because it's too hard to put on earrings or to put on, you know, whatever is difficult. So I might as well just not. But the point of Trendable is to really give people ideas and hacks for being able to do things easier um, so that they can look their best and then ultimately feel their best. And um, I started Trendable two and a half years ago. I have a disease, a neuromuscular disease called Charcot Marie Tooth disease. I'm actually wearing one of our t-shirts, Charcot Marie Tooth. Um, All proceeds go to charity um, for COVID relief stuff right now. But um, Charcot Marie Tooth disease is a peripheral um, disease of your peripheral nerves. And for me, it's inherited. There's many different types of CMT. Um, which is what it's called, I have a a very common type and it affects mostly my hands and my feet. Um, I have foot drop, bilateral foot drop in both feet. Um, And what that means is that if I didn't wear leg braces, it would feel like I'm carrying like 500 pounds on each foot and I would trip and fall a lot. Um, My hands, although they look like, you know, regular hands. Um, I can't button and do anything fine motor related um, that requires like picking up any flat objects, Um, you know, buttons, little intricate things, um, you know, like pulling a debit card out of the debit machine is sometimes challenging. So things that, you know, an able person might just do in their everyday life and not even think about it. 
for me and for many people with disabilities, it's something that I have to think about. And um, so Trendable exists to give people hacks to be able to do those things as well as to look and feel their best. So um, I'm all about like living my life and it sounds a little cliche, maybe, <laughs> you know, like not defined by my disability, but I truly am not. I just find ways to work around so that I can do the things I want to do. And um, I want to help others to find ways to do that themselves so that they aren't saying, no, I can't do that. But they're like, oh, well, you know what? I can do that. Maybe not the same way as their friend is doing it but in a different way. And one of the first things that struck me in what you were just saying was that you appear to be able-bodied. Mm -hmm. um, and so unless people get to know who you are or maybe see your braces, um, at least with your hands, people may not know what, um, that you have some sort of disability at all. And so, I want to understand because I'm somebody that lives with a very external visual disability. But, yeah. Um, I think there is a wide population of people that live with invisible disabilities. So can you describe your experience with having an invisible disability? Maybe, um, you know, some of the challenges, but also some of the benefits. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and there are benefits and different kinds of challenges. Um, obviously, since my disabilities aren't obviously visible, I don't use um, a wheelchair, a walker, um, any of the signs that someone says, oh, that's someone who has a disability. I do not have visible deformities that someone would say, oh, there's something you know, wrong <laughs> um, with her. So there are different challenges and invisible disabilities in general is like this huge area that can include things like, you know, having psychiatric challenges, ADHD, ADD, mental disorders, you know, as well as physical and um, chronic illnesses. A lot of people with chronic illnesses um, like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, um, they would say that they have invisible disabilities and they do. Mine are literal physical disabilities that you can't see, so they're invisible disabilities. And um, when I came out uh, about two and a half years ago with my website, I like decided that the best way I could do that is to post on my Facebook to my friends, not even on like the trendable page at the time because it was just beginning. But I posted on my page here. I live in Michigan, and I posted you know, hi everyone, you know, you guys may not know this. And I showed a picture of myself wearing a dress and showing my leg braces, which um, go from my foot, bottom of my feet, all the way up to my knees. Um, and I don't typically show them, but I showed them in this photo and it's on the website. And I'm like, you know, everyone, you know, I'm starting this website to help people with disabilities. You may not know this, but I have this neuromuscular disease and these are the challenges that I have and please share it with people you know and blah, blah, blah. And it was like, it went literally, you know, Michigan viral. <laughs> they could, you know, people were just shocked. A lot of people who I know and who see me every day had no idea. And um, it was really amazing because I mean, not only was I feeling great because it was, you know, being vulnerable and brave and getting all of these comments from people saying, you know, not only Lainey, oh, wow, like I didn't know you had that, but also people sharing with me all the challenges that they have that are invisible. And everyone has stuff, right? Like, you know, some of our stuff is more obvious, but everyone has stuff. And, you know, the greatest challenge that anyone has is their own. <laughs> so once we stop comparing like, oh, she has it so bad. I'm so lucky. I don't have it that bad. Well, your bad might be someone else's, you know, awesome. Right. Um, so the, the invisible disability part that you were talking about, you know, I, I illustrate it like in, when I go to the grocery store, and I live, you know, in a nice suburban house. I have a handsome, nice husband. I live a nice life. I have two little cute white dogs. And stereotypically, you know, when I go to the grocery store and the cashier hands me change, 
well, now during COVID, they're not handing anybody change. But in the olden days, before this, you know, and they'd hand me change, and let's say they put the change on the counter, well, I would just leave that change because I wasn't, you know, wanting to have a whole discussion of the fact that I have this neuromuscular disease and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, someone behind me, if they didn't know me and they didn't know my story, they might make an assumption that, wow, that girl has so much money, she doesn't even care about that change. And then they'd leave like, oh, like her life is so good, you know, with whatever, whatever stereotypes, whatever feelings they have without even knowing me or knowing the situation, we all do this. And, you know, even though trendable, the point of it is not so much for me to be, you know, an advocate for people with disabilities, all of us, you, me, anybody who's out there in the world helping others with disabilities, is an advocate and is teaching people and um it's really like the coolest by you know part of trendable that i didn't even know would happen is that i'm educating people about what disabilities look like you know you are what disabilities look like i'm what disabilities look like um they're just different we're so. everywhere <laughs> right we're everywhere yeah we are everywhere for sure so um you know what would be i want to get into the fashion yeah. conversation uh but i do want to help maybe someone who's viewing this who may not have a disability but may in the future be interacting with people who they may or may not know has a disability what would be um some tip or advice you would give to somebody or the general public about how to interact with people in a way that is more conscious or mm -hmm. empathetic to what they may or may not know. Well, I think what you just hit on is the, you know, is the, is the ideal word, which is empathetic. You know, the last thing, and, and people who do not have disabilities and people who do have disabilities, all of us do this a lot of times. I mean, how many times have you, you know, as a person heard, oh, you poor thing. Oh, but you're so young, you know, people with chronic illnesses here all the time, but you look so good. How can you be sick? You know, that is not empowering. That is not putting yourself on an equal footing with the other person. That's talking down to someone. So I think the best approach for anyone when they're trying, that they're just curious is to talk to someone like you would any other person and not to make assumptions and not to grab someone's arm to help them unless they ask you, um, but to be, to give someone the same respect that you'd want, right? The last thing in person who's in a wheelchair wants is someone literally looking down at them. So think about how you would want to be treated. And I think the best connection is using humor and being vulnerable yourself, you know, and saying, hey, you know, I see, you know, let's say someone is wearing leg braces and you want to know what they are, you know? Well, okay, that person has a choice whether or not they share it with you or not, and not to be offended if they don't want to share it. But if you are curious, you could say, hey, you know, I know someone who has leg braces. Are those leg braces? You know, and if that person chooses to tell you all about it, great. But if they don't, be okay with that. But never do the Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> Your life must be so bad, you know, like, because it's not, Right. you know, a lot of the times people with disabilities have just as happy or unhappy lives as everybody else, you know? Yep, exactly. I want to talk about the fashion part. What sure. is your favorite hack? that you have come up with that someone might be able to find on Trendable at Trendable.com? Okay, well, I have a ton of them. Obviously, you know, since my specialty is really the leg braces, I have a ton for that, but I won't talk about those. You can find a ton of that on Trendable with ways to wear sandals and, um, you know, hacks for leg braces to make them better for you so that you can wear cute shoes and, um, you can travel without worrying about breaking them and that kind of thing. But for regular everyday fashions, I would say, you know, if you have hand problems, one of the, one of the biggest challenges is, is being able to grab your clothing and be able to, to put it on all clothing, whether it's socks, you know, or, um, 
pants, pulling them up and down when you go to the bathroom. So a simple thing is to have someone put loops um, made out of a stiffer material, like a, like almost like a denim material, something that's stiffer that you can grab onto. They sell loops, they sell belt loops for like people who sew. <laughs> and like a Joanne's Fabrics, have someone do that for you and put them in the inside of your belt loop. Um, you can all, pant loop, you can also put loops on socks and that makes it easier if um, my mom who passed away, she had really, really bad hand problems. I mean, her hands were like this. So, you know, she needed to be able to put a fist into something like her thumb or her fist. So, you know, whatever size loops you want, but it allows you to have that, um, that ability that, um, what's the word? Traction or whatever to be able to, to pull them up. So that's a, a very simple um, fashion hack. Yeah, that's, that's a brilliant idea. Um, where do you come up with your hacks? Because I'm sure there are people like me who have to live their everyday life and we don't have our personal Laney with us to <laughs> come up with these hacks. Like where, how do you identify or come up with those kinds of hacks that maybe we can also apply to in our lives? When you have disabilities, you have to use out of the box thinking for everything you do, whether it's fashion or whether it's like you want to see the top of a mountain and you can't get there. So you have to brainstorm all the ways you can do that and what the possible ways are. And you know, some people's brains don't work that way. So get a friend, <laughs> brainstorm, be like, you know what? I really want to do this. Let's think about what are the, all the ways I could possibly do this. You know, what, how can I make life easier? So, you know, another example, um, I have trouble, um, I don't have trouble bending at all. And a lot of the, you know, disability tools for your at home use are really meant for people who have trouble bending. Um, a lot of elderly people, people who are recovering from operations. They're not so much meant for someone like me who's very active, who does Pilates and exercises, and who just literally can't pick that thing up off the floor. Not that we can't bend, but can't grab it. Um, especially now with not being able to get manicures because nails, nails, as like frivolous as it may be to other people, nails, when you have hand problems, allow you to have that leverage to be able to pick up something off the floor. So you can see like now I don't have my fake gel nails. I wonder if insurance will cover that. <laughs> yeah, no, it should for sure. Right? Like, I mean, so, so anyways, a simple thing that I thought of that, you know, and nothing's original by the way in life, obviously. And so I don't know, I'm sure maybe this exists, but I hadn't seen it. Um, you know, those um, lint brushes, they're sticky lint brushes. Oh. Very simple, like a lint brush, you can get them at the dollar store. If you have trouble picking up something that's flat, like a penny off the ground, a lint brush sticks right to it and picks it right up. And they make little portable ones that you could put in a purse or whatever and take with you. So, you know, it's just being creative and thinking, okay, well, I have this problem. Other people probably have this problem. And what are some ideas that could fix this same problem? You know? That is so brilliant. That's amazing. I don't know how brilliant it is, but it certainly is like a doable, easy thing that anybody can, you know, anybody can do. And like every one of us has that creative. We just might not have opened up that part <laughs> of our brain. Yeah. But I've always been someone who, you know, is a researcher. I'm like someone who spends, you know, we're going on a trip and part of the best part of the trip is obviously for me, the planning of the trip. So I'm one of those researchers and looking at every possible option for the best, blah, blah, blah. And then when I actually have the trip, it's not as awesome because I've like done with the research. <laughs> so you know, if you're <laughs> not yourself a researcher, then like text me, go on Trendable, ask me, I'm happy to help or a friend or someone you may know. If, yeah. You know. Thank you so much. I feel like that, just that alone is such a huge takeaway. I would never have thought about a lint brush and oh, I, I get... I get off on <laughs> little Yeah, and they're better than, and they're easier and better than those grabber things, right? Like those oh, big yeah. grabber things aren't always convenient, but a lint brush, you could have them all over your house and yeah. it really does the job. So 
Yeah, amazing. Okay, what would you say to the person sitting there right now watching this and going, oh, I just don't have the energy to put on makeup or to like go shopping and try on clothes in the fitting room and, you know, to the energy to invest in themselves to mm -hmm. make themselves feel good. Because again, it's that external internal connection that we have um, with our, with fashion. So what would you say to that person who just doesn't feel like the effort well, I get it, right? I mean, I get it. It's a lot of work. And, you know, with what's going on right now, as you and I are, you know, recording this with COVID and quarantining and all of that and people being in sweatpants every day for, you know, friends without disabilities who are like, I haven't showered in a week or, you know, I've been wearing sweatpants because it's so comfortable and I don't wear makeup and I put my hair up or whatever. Well, you know, take that one day and see how they change, how much of the motivation changes when they do put on a little mascara or lip gloss, if that's their thing, or puts on their jeans to just check to make sure they fit, you know, like your whole demeanor changes. It does. It affects how you carry yourself. You know, you know, when you feel, when you look schleppy, you feel schleppy and all you want to do is lay on the couch and watch Netflix. But when you're dressing the part as they speak, you know, as they say, then you actually produce more. And, you know, and I don't mean just like work. I mean, this is not like work, but I'm talking about just in life. If you're looking for a relationship, you know, like you, if you don't put in the effort, you will, you'll get what you reap. You get what you give. So, if you're going to be schleppy, you're going to get that schleppy person as the person you attract. They're not going to see you as worthy because you haven't taken the time for you. So I would say that at the very top of one's list is finding ways to make someone, make a person feel their best. And, you know, not everyone's a makeup person. Like I'm not telling women like, oh, you have to wear makeup, but you need to do what makes you feel like you're the best version of you. And, you know, for me, you know, that is brushing my hair, <laughs> that is putting on the basics, lip gloss and some mascara, even if I'm not going out of my house, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel confident and it makes me, you know, like more inclined to want to do things and put myself out there. And the yeah. response from others is better. Yeah. And it, it's like taking action and then you living into that action. And so I think our, our personal selves, uh, well, I believe anyway, that our external is just a reflection of what we feel about ourselves internally. Um, right. Sometimes it requires us to just take care of the external and then we live into that. And I want this to be also, um, you know, there are a lot of people like myself who rely on caregivers yeah. And to caregivers, take the time to listen to your clients about what makes them feel good. Do they want you to spend more time on straightening their hair like I like? <laughs> or do they want to um, take the extra time to put on that, that you know, beautiful dress that they feel good in? Or just even like a, a like perfume. You know, oh, yeah. I have a friend right now who literally like, she's not putting on makeup or whatever, but she's like, every day I put on perfume because it makes her feel good. It makes her feel like she's a person <laughs> and you know, that's what is her thing, you know? So if, you know, everyone is different, like you don't like, I get it. I mean, I have extremely, you can't even tell probably, but I have very thick hair and it takes a very long time to blow dry my hair. And in my regular non COVID life, for me, it's worth it to have, I pay $20 and I have blowouts once a week because it's hard work to do my hair and with hand problems, it's even more hard, you know, and I want it to look good. So I go and get a blowout. Well, I feel very empowered these days because I found this, you know, because I couldn't go do those things. Um, but I didn't want to just wear my hair in a bun every single day. I found this very, very, very lightweight um, brush that's a blow dryer on Amazon. And I have it on Trendable. It's like $14 on Amazon. 
and the thing is better than anything. I mean, I'm blow drying my own hair and it's only taking me a half an hour and it's really lightweight. Like it's not hard to hold. So things like that, that I, I'm like, now I said, I said to my husband, like, I don't think I even need to go get blow dries. Like I'm doing a pretty good job. Good thing. Just save some money. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, just saving money, spending money and saving money, you know, <laughs> you know, but everyone should do what makes them feel good. And that's the whole point. You know, I don't buy it though. When some women say, I just, I don't have time for that. You have time for everything that is, you know, you have time for a lot of things. <laughs> it's yeah. just a matter of what you think is important. And to me, that should be at the top of the list. And if you do have a caregiver that um, you depend on, then, you know, and they don't have a lot of time and whatever you're rushing, you have to say to them, you have to advocate for yourself and say, you know what, this is important. Like I need this part to be part of our routine, you know? Yeah. So Yes, 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 yes. I am so excited. I love all the messages that are coming from this. I hope um, you as the viewer are finding some good takeaways, some practical ones, and some ones that you can just internalize and embrace on yourselves. And one of the favorite sayings that uh, you have on your trendable site, Lainey, is um, embracing the perfectly imperfect or your yeah. perfect imperfections. Um, and I, you know, can you just explain that real quick? Yeah, it's my favorite expression. It was long before, obviously I started the blog. I, I like, I liked it. I saw perfectly imperfect somewhere and I was like, oh yeah, that's me. That's like everybody. Right. But that's how I feel. And that's how I, I what I call the trendable followers, my tribe, the perfectly imperfect community. And like we talked about at the beginning, everyone has stuff. People with invisibility in with disabilities, you know, on the surface, it may seem like our stuff is like really big <laughs> compared to other people's stuff. And a lot of times it is, you know, but everyone has something and no one is perfect. And once we stop trying to pretend that we got it, we got it. And if we're vulnerable and we let ourselves be vulnerable and let ourselves um, ask for help when we need it, you know, and this is for people like myself who have invisible disabilities who are avoiding going to the gym because they're embarrassed or they don't think that they're going to be able to do something or they're not going to look like everybody else or they need help, you know, from an instructor to set up something, you know, Trendable and myself, it's all about like learning how to feel confident enough to be able to realize that asking for help is more a sign of strength than anything. Like it's the biggest sign of strength. No one is going to look down on you for asking for help. It's that they won't understand you if you don't say a word. Like you're not relatable to people if you just keep it all in and try to be like, oh, I got it. I got it. You know, a lot of people with disabilities are worried about coming off as complainers. And there's a fine line between being a complainer and being a person who's just like, yeah, real. <laughs> like, not every day is all like rainbows and sunshine, right? Like, some days suck, some days are difficult, and some days are awesome. And that's just like everybody. And so I think being real with people is the best way to be, and people relate to people, you know? who are honest and real. Yeah. So, yes. Own it. Own, own it. Own, own it. it. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you got, own it, right? Exactly. And I'd and, like to, yeah, go yeah. ahead. No, I, I mean, so I have a podcast that I do with a friend of mine, um, Estella, and it's called Embrace It. And she has more visible disabilities than I do. And um, she chooses to show her leg braces on an everyday basis. You know, she like walks around, she's like, it's too hot, I don't wanna cover them up. Like, I like talking about it and I feel the opposite. I feel like, you know, because I do have a choice, I don't want it to be the first thing that comes up in a conversation. Not because I feel ashamed, but because it's like something, my disability is something I have, like everyone has stuff. And it, it doesn't need to be 
like my entry. <laughs> like it doesn't need to be my lead, I guess, for me. You know, other people it is. I don't know what my point of this was, but it, my point is, is that you should just rock whatever it is that you want to do. If you want to bling out your, you know, your cane, your walker, your braces, whatever, and like put rhinestones and put lights and like draw a lot of attention and like be the best advocate for dis people with disabilities and like, that's you, great, like awesome, you know? If you don't want to be that, you don't. But just be honest and say, you know, hey, there's a lot more to me. Like, hey, do you mind if we talk about something else? Like, I'm so tired of talking. I'm over myself. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> I just don't feel like talking about it all the time. You know, people right. get that when you're yeah. honest. Yes, yes. I think that's a great takeaway too. Gosh, you just keep coming with them, Lainey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would love to find out from you, the viewer, what is your favorite imperfection? Um, and, you know, comment below. I want to also thank Lainey for coming on the show, imparting her wisdom, um, giving us some real practical hacks that we can apply. And I want to encourage you to go to trendable.com. That's trend with a dash and then able.com. And you can find even more hacks that you can start applying to your life today. And I wanna encourage you to also um, advocate for yourself, take care of yourself, um, put yourself as number one because you can't give what you don't have. So if right. you wanna give more to your family, to your friends, to the world, that has to start with you. Um, and it's not a selfish thing. It's actually just being conscious and self-aware about how you feel on the inside and letting everything on the outside be a reflection of that. Um, so Beautifully said. That was perfect. <laughs> Thank you. And I want to remind you to please subscribe and share. And if you'd like to join our community, you can do that on my private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. If you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you so much. And until we meet again, be blessed.